today you're going to be taking a look at the Kodiak disc brake kit with 13 inch hub and rotors with 8 on 6.5 inch bolt patterns. And that's going to be for 7,000 pound axles, part number K2HR712D. A lot of people are upgrading their drum brakes to disc brakes on their trailer for good reason. They're going to ride better, they're going to give us more braking power, including on the highway where most drum brakes tend to fade and have less power. And there's less moving parts, which means there's going to be less to maintain, less to replace, which that means the maintenance cost is going to go down. And overall, a disc brake is just going to give you a lot better braking performance over any kind of drum brake. Here's where a Kodiak disc brake kit looks like once it's installed. Now since it is a kit, it's going to be a lot easier to upgrade from drum brakes to disc brakes, giving us a lot better braking power and a lot more even braking even when we're on the highway. The fact that it's a disc brake kit makes changing the pads out that much easier. Instead of having to remove a drum and replace all the springs and hardware inside, we can simply remove two bolts on the back of the caliper, swing it out of the way, and replace the two pads on the inside. The maintenance costs are going to be lower than drum brakes because there's going to be less moving parts to maintain, repair, or replace. Now our assembly is going to have a dacrimic coating on there which is going to provide superior rust and corrosion protection. Now while the brake pads are probably going to wear it off of the braking surface, every other component is going to have that on the hub as well as the brackets and the caliper itself providing us a lot more protection against rust or corrosion, making it ideal for any saltwater or freshwater trailers. Along with the coating, our rotors are going to be vented, helping dissipate some of that braking heat. And our rotors and hubs are going to be a one-piece assembly, giving us that smooth ride, balancing out the hub and rotor, minimizing the lateral runout to prevent any kind of warping. Our caliper itself does have the coating on it protected, and it is a cast iron construction, and it's self-adjusting for smooth equal braking. Now the cast iron construction is going to stay nice and rigid and not flex like aluminum and the piston has a stainless steel construction and a two and a half inch diameter which is much larger than other brands on the market. The pads themselves are going to be a high performance ceramic brake pad giving us superior braking action. Included in our kit we're going to have enough to do one axle. We're going to have the hub and rotor assembly as well as two calipers and all the mounting hardware. Now keep in mind, in order for the brakes to work, you will need a hydraulic actuator and brake lines, which are sold separately. The bearings and seals are also sold separately, but the races are pre-installed. Since this is a 13 inch diameter rotor, it is only going to fit wheels 16 inches or bigger. So now that we've seen what our Kodiak disc brake kit looks like, and going over some of the features, let's go ahead and put the last one on together. So we already removed our wheel and tire, now we're going to have to remove the dust cap on the end of our axle here. Grab a pair of channel locks or whatever you have. You just want to be careful not to crush that cap, but you want to get a good grip on it. Kind of work it back and forth a little bit until we can get it broke loose. If you're having trouble, you might want to grab a flathead screwdriver and very carefully try to get behind the flange on the cap so we can get it started and work our way around. We're going to remove that cap. On the inside may look a little bit different. You may have a cotter pin or something else, but we're going to need to remove the retaining pin or nut at the end here. So we're going to remove that and hold on to it because we will be using it later. And we should have a nut we can back off and remove. There will be a plate washer right behind that. If you're having a little bit of trouble grabbing it, what you can do is, is you can just reach in, give the drum a good wiggle and it will start pulling everything out for you. Just want to be careful because the bearing will come out too. You can just pull out the drum just a bit and the bearing will fall right out. Once we have the outer bearing and everything else removed, you're going to want to carefully remove the drum assembly and set it aside. 
Now at this point I always like to clean off the spindle and inspect everything for any kind of gouges, any heat marks or any kind of damage that may be on there. So you just want to get a rag and wipe off any of the excess grease and check the entire area and make sure it's in good condition. Our brake assembly is going to be held on by these five nuts. So I'm going to grab a 916 socket and pull them out. Once you have the nuts removed, you can pull the brake assembly down, but in our case, there are electric brakes, so we're going to have to cut the cable so that we can get it pulled away from the axle. Take a pair of side cutters, I'm going to cut the wire, and set this aside. At this point, we can grab our bracket that our caliper is going to be mounted to. Now since we're on the right side of the trailer, if we're looking at the axle, we want the mounting points to be at the 9 o'clock position. So we can take our mounting bracket, line it up with the studs, making sure that that's on the left hand side or towards the back of our trailer. Then we can take the nuts that we removed and loosely reinstall them. I'm just going to get them on there hand tight so the bracket won't fall down for right now. I'm going to come back with that same 916 socket and snug up those nuts. So then we can come back with a torque wrench and we're going to torque our hardware down. Now the instructions don't give you a torque specification. You're going to want to go off of what the manufacturer recommends to torque the brake assembly to. Now we're going to grab our rotor and we're going to put it face down. Now on the back here, our race is already pre-installed. We went ahead and picked up the corresponding bearings for it. It's going to fit right there in the back. But before we put them in, we're going to need to pack the bearings with grease. Now a lot of people don't have a bearing packer at home. And I'll show you an easy way to do it by hand. It does take a little bit longer and it's a little messy, but it's not that bad. So we're just going to take a good amount of grease in our hand and you don't want to just wipe the bearing with grease, you want to get it into the rollers there. So you're going to take the grease and you're just going to push it as best you can inside that cavity. Kind of doing, wiping it while you're pushing it in there. And you grab the excess grease and kind of keep working it around, getting as much grease in the bearing as you can. It's not going to hurt if you get it on the outside, but the main thing you're really wanting to do is get it on the inside of that channel where the rollers themselves are. Then we'll flip it over, grab some more grease, and work it into the other side. Once you got it pretty good, go ahead and go around the outside, put some grease around the bearing, make sure you get as much in there as you can. And then with the tapered part, the thinner part, pointing down. We can drop our bearing into the back of the rotor, make sure it's seated all the way in there, and we can get ready to put the seal in place. So we can take our new seal, we're going to loosely line it up, make sure it's nice and even. If you have a seal driver this size, I would suggest using that to get it in place. If not, your best bet is to grab a block of wood put it directly over the seal, and then take a hammer and drive it into place. Now I'm going to periodically check and see if it's going in even or where I need to adjust. Now that the seal's driven in, we can put our rotor in place and lift it up over the spindle. Make sure it seats all the way towards the back. Now our outer bearing is going to need to be packed as well. So we can go ahead and repeat that same process that we did for the inner bearing. Once we have our bearing packed, we'll go ahead and lift it up over the end of the axle there. And we're going to push it into position. We're going to make sure it goes all the way back and it seats in there fully. So with our bearing in place, we can put 
that washer that came out behind it back in. Then we're going to replace that nut. I'm just going to snug that nut up a little bit. Then after I have it snug, I'm going to give the rotor a few turns. Back it off just a bit. Once that's nice and snug and we have everything back in place, we're going to replace that retaining nut or cotter pin, whatever your trailer has. And since we packed them by hand, we want to make sure that our bearings have the full amount of grease in them. So I'm going to take a grease gun and I'm going to fill it up until we just get a little bit of grease coming out around the edges of our bearing to make sure that it's full of grease and everything's lubricated properly. Bearings full of grease, we can put our grease cap back in place. Just want to be careful when you're putting these back on, they can be a bit of a headache. Just want to go around in a circle, gently tapping it so it'll go in evenly until it's fully seated. So we can grab our caliper. Now the two bleeder screws, as well as the brake line inlet, needs to go towards the inside of the trailer. We're going to have two mounting bolts. I'm going to go ahead and loosely put them in there right now. So you want to make sure you have your bolts at least somewhat in the caliper itself. We can slide it into position. And it will take a little bit of wiggling to get it in position. And once we have it lined up, we can get the bolts started by hand. Then we can come back with a half inch wrench and tighten them up. Then we come back with a half inch socket and a torque wrench. And we're going to torque our bolts to the specified amount in the instructions. And we'll repeat that for the other bolt as well. Since we converted our electric brakes to disc hydraulic brakes, we're going to have to hook up an actuator and all the brake lines in order for them to work. We went ahead and mounted our actuator, put our brake lines in place, so now we're going to need to bleed our brakes. You're going to want to start with the farthest caliper from the actuator itself. And the easiest way to do this is if you have a breakaway switch, you can have an extra set of hands pull the breakaway switch, which will apply the maximum force to your brakes and then we can open up the bleeder. I'm going to take a hose here, put it right on the end of the bleeder so I can watch the fluid or air coming out and then I have a little bit of fluid in the bottom of the bottle so air doesn't get sucked back in. So I'm going to have my extra set of hands pull the breakaway switch and the actuator will kick in. So I'm going to take a 5 16 wrench, open up my bleeder. You can see some fluid start to come out. So we'll go ahead and close it, put the breakaway switch back in, and we'll continue to do that until we get a solid stream of brake fluid. You just want to keep in mind you want to always double check the reservoir to make sure it's staying full because you don't want to run your actuator dry because then you're just going to put more air into the system. And we'll keep doing that with each one of our calipers moving closer to the actuator until we have all of them bled. With all the brakes bled, we're ready to put the wheels and tires back on and hit the road. That'll finish up your look at the Kodiak Disc Brake Kit, part number K2HR712D.